Okay, good morning, everybody. It's uh, Cynthia Sanford. I'm the coordinator for fashion design and techniques, and I'm going to let Ingrid just introduce herself. Hi there, I'm Ingrid Wagemans, and I'm the coordinator for the fashion management program. Welcome to the information session for George Brown College Fashion Studies programs. Now the agenda today is we are going to just outline some of our fashion programs and then we're going to look at some of the details within each program. We're going to answer why George Brown for fashion. We're going to um, talk about why study now and then we're going to review some of the graduates and, and uh, toot our horn a little bit with, with that regard. Uh, we're going to also provide an overview of additional college services and we're going to answer some questions. If we run out of time, I think Cindy is going to um, um, guide us with regards to heading back to the question and answer room. So if we do happen to run out of time, uh, don't worry. Okay, so we have several two-year diploma programs. Uh, with those two-year diploma programs, they all start in September and we're going to work you really, really hard. You're going to have uh, just very little breaks between each semester. And, uh, but you're going to have a lot of fun. You're going to be finished and ready to go in the industry after two years. We also have post diploma programs or one year graduate certificate programs. So this means that you would have to have uh, gone through a diploma program or uh, had something equal with regards to your studies. And again, this is a September start and that's your international fashion management. Now, the first of the three two-year diploma programs is fashion techniques and design. So you can see here listed, there's some of the courses that we are going to be providing for you. And uh, what this course is gonna do is give you an overview of the apparel industry. The entry level careers for this particular program uh, would be a very hands-on technical type of uh, positions. For instance, we've got listed here product developers, studio assistants, prototype engineers. You can uh, get into fashion illustration or technical design. And then what makes our program unique? We have hands-on pattern drafting and garment construction. Right from day one, you're going to be expected to uh, start drafting and sewing your garments, okay? We also have multiple uh, competitions and opportunities for mentorship uh, with industry partners. We have, uh, if you choose to do so, we have field education internships. And every semester, we have a capstone project. And that capstone project just adds to your, to your skill level. We also highlight uh, sustainability in all of our courses. Now, second, the second second year diploma program is fashion management. And while fashion techniques and design is more about illustrating, drafting, and sewing of the garment, fashion management really deals with the business part of, of uh, production, um, buying, it focuses on fabric science, manufacturing, quality assurance, supply chain logistics, marketing. The entry level careers for this particular program uh, would be uh, positions like purchasing, allocation of garments. So again, you're looking at, you know, where are you going to source your production, um, managing retail, and then you can get, in, get into the whole uh, marketing or merchandising part of it, which uh, will entail social media content or e-commerce coordinating. Now, what makes this particular area uh, special? And I'm gonna let um, Ingrid chime in if there's something that I, I, I don't uh, identify uh, with the great amount of detail because she's the, the coordinator for this particular area. Uh, but with regards to fashion management, what's unique is we have uh, field education internships. And this particular internship, uh, they start off with a sort of a prep class, and this is gonna help students with their job skirt, um, search skills. Uh, we have industry speakers. Um, it's gonna assist you in landing a position. Uh, and there's 280 hours of, of um, field um, not placement, but field education opportunities with this particular um, program. 
Now, what else makes fashion management special is we are the only program, uh, only Canadian program that's endorsed by the American Apparel and Footwear Association. And this is a, an association that uh, is, is tantamount in, in um, directing different um, um, programs and different industry uh, events. Now we've done very well, uh, the uh, fashion management group. We, it's it's a, a competition, uh, the FSF um, scholarship awards. It's a competition that's held down in the States. And uh, because the Canadian um, uh, school, our Canadian school, George Brown College has done so well, uh, we compete against schools like Harvard. And Harvard is actually asking our, our uh, teachers, what is it that you people are doing that uh, are, are creating such um, uh, great um, uh, students and, and great uh, results with regards to these, um, these competitions. Now you can see that the scholarship funds are not anything to sneeze at. Um, this is all in US dollars. And in 2020, we had four winners and one of the winners won um, 8,500 US. Now the third of our second year diploma programs is fashion business industry program. This program is a combination of fashion techniques and design and fashion management. You'll be taking in, uh, fundamental drafting and sewing um, classes, not to the extent that you would in the fashion design uh, program, but uh, you're also going to be looking at a little bit more of the, the business end of it as well, like marketing, retail operations, um, buying, and uh, there's a little bit of an emphasis on uh, entrepreneurship. So entry level careers within the um, and the F one one two the fashion business industry program uh, again we we uh, are preparing you for entrepreneurship but you can also land jobs as allocators um, again you can you can read the list here pro, uh, production or quality control assistant store managers again you can get into the whole social media and um, uh, content coordinating. And what makes this particular program unique is it's more hands-on than the fashion management program. So again, I mentioned how you have uh, a little bit of sewing and drafting within this program. In uh, third semester, you have that capstone project. And then you have, again, opportunities with regards to field education. And again, it's more entrepreneurial uh, focused. Now, these are just a few of the skills coming into to George Brown, into our fashion programs that we um, suggest that you have, okay? These are, these are skills that we think that uh, you're gonna be very successful in the programs if you, if you have uh, computer skills, basic uh, Word, Excel, PowerPoint. If you work well in teams, that's a big factor in the job market today. You have to, you're always gonna be working uh, uh, within a team situation or most of the time. Um, again, computer with uh, audio and video capacity, time management skills. Now this is what uh, we're gonna be further developing. And um, this is what's referred to as um, essential employability skills. And these are um, skills that uh, we work on with you. Now it's, it's really important that you have some of these uh, items on this list though, with regards to um, looking at online and face-to-face -face, uh, um, school. Now, I just mentioned um, what programs or what courses in each of the three um, two-year diploma programs we have, but here's just a, a sampling of several of the electives that we have a choice of. These are just but a few. Again, another list of, of, uh, of um, electives. Uh, the visual here is actually a magazine that they produce in the fashion journalism course. And now here's a list of just a few of the companies that our students have interned with or that are employed by. We work with these companies and it, it changes from year to year, but this is just a sampling. Now we get a lot of questions about entry level salaries. Okay, so this is just an example, 41,750. That's based on 96 um, uh, people surveyed. 
And uh, you can see here by the graph that the low end is 27,710 and the high end is 70,975. So the median, it, median is uh, uh, just over uh, or just under 42,000 a year. Now we do have an international fashion management course and I'm not just sure how many of you are really interested in this at this point. Again, um, this is a course that's provided, it's a one year post diploma program and it, the international fashion management program provides learners with the skills and knowledge needed for success in worldwide fashion industry. Now the entry level careers for international fashion management are listed here as a apparel sourcing coordinator. Again, you're, you're looking at um, um, a lot of offshore um, uh, work done there, logistics coordinator, very important and international marketing assistant. What makes this career or this particular program uh, unique is we have small classes, okay? You're not battling for attention. Um, we have field internship, uh, internships. We have, um, there's 160 hours of uh, un unpaid internships, but you get your feet wet, wet within the industry. And uh, this provides you with skills that are essential for working in the international business uh, area. Okay, so now we're gonna go on to why George Brown. So we're gonna start tooting our horn here a little bit. So you can see here by the visual, we were named um, one of the best schools in the world for 2019 and 2020. You can see here, um, the first visual is from a CEO World Magazine. And we were only second in Canada to Ryerson. And Ryerson is a much longer program as, as you may or may not know. Uh, ours is two years and you're out, okay? And then the next two visuals are from publications, again, Style Democracy and uh, World Scholarship Forum. And again, we we're listed as, as one of the top schools um, in the world. Okay, again, why George Brown? We are living in the uh, biggest city in Canada. Uh, because we're the biggest city in Canada, or not just because we're the biggest city, but we have numerous fashion and cultural events, um, museums, art galleries, job opportunities. Now we were ranked 11th in the world, according to QS top universities as the best um, city with regards to students. Now the reason why George Brown, uh, it's some of uh, you may be close to home, you may be uh, living in Toronto, but uh, the rest of you, we have student residents called the George, it's off campus uh, rental resort and off campus rental resources. What else makes us unique is we are one of the only schools that has a, uh, a designer in residence, they call them. Um, this is uh, Franco Mirabelli. He uh, has a career spanning over 30 years. Franco Mirabelli was, uh, has distinguished himself as one of Canada's strongest talents. In addition, we have many uh, industry ties. Uh, for two um, years running, we had an apparel business symposium and uh, that symposium brought in people from the industry that um, highlighted trends, insights uh, as far as the future of, of fashion. And uh, Constantine Campaneris is the, uh, the professor that headed this particular event. Another one of our faculty members, Berta Pavlov, uh, she was a guest speaker at, at Rom Connects, 18th century chintz Benyans um, mapping patterns at the Royal Ontario Museum. And uh, this was a, a talk that she did just recently at the end of March. She's involved in many, um, many events going on at the Rom. She just recently as well was involved in the Dior um, show that was at the Rom. Uh, she helped with re reproducing some of the Dior gowns. Now, in addition, um, a lot of our um, faculty members have their own businesses. Um, for instance, um, Mana Manjava and uh, Rashmita Alam, uh, they've created a business called EC3 Concept. And uh, it's based on, on making garments that are, are um, usable and uh, equally um, um, attainable by 
people with or without physical challenges. And then the um, illustration on the right is another one of our professors. It's some of uh, her artwork, Julia Chirpanova. Now we have a, uh, a interesting um, uh, event or an interesting uh, opportunity here. Uh, one of our profs is um, working in the film industry in the costume area. And we can see here that uh, Angela Elder is from and the uh, visual on the right, which is Mrs. America. I don't know if you saw that series on uh, FX, but uh, this series was nominated for the best period costumes in a TV series at the, at the last Emmy Awards. And then the visual on the right is another project that Angela is working on. And it's um, again, that Netflix movie called Spinning Out. And she's the uh, key costume cutter for that particular um, Okay, so now we've got another one of our um, faculty members, Joy Walker. Uh, her art is featured in the Rachel Kami RC01 Zine Magazine. Uh, and just to let you know, we have over 48 faculty that um, are teaching in our fashion departments. And again, they bring, they bring such a wealth of uh, experience and uh, opportunities from the fashion industry. What else makes this unique is we have a manufacturing outlet or a manufacturing um, plant. And this is down the Fashion Exchange is down at 63 Regent Park. The Fashion Exchange is a manufacturing fi uh, facility that uh, features dye sublimation, sub, sorry, can't talk this morning, dye sublimation printing on fabric. Um, and we have uh, laser cutters, we have technical embroidery machines, plus Passon 3D digital fitting booth. And this is uh, all the up and coming technologies are available. And uh, this is something that they work hard in, in trying to keep um, uh, above and beyond the curve with regards to technology in the fashion industry. Okay, another reason why George Brown, we have a strong student community. You can see uh, the visual on the left and in the center with all, all the gals with their knitting and their embroidery. Um, this is um, a weekly event that's held just to as sort of to get together and make sure that everybody's um, um, having some fun along with all the work that you're doing. Okay, so it's a real it's a real nice uh, event. The visual on the bottom uh, right, that's an event that um, Julie um, uh, Chihoyne was uh, tantamount in, in put, pulling together a clothing swap. And this clothing swap uh, just allowed people to, you know, reuse some of their, their garments, give up what they didn't wear anymore in exchange for something that was new to them. So this is something that, uh, that uh, makes us special. Okay, again, strong community. Uh, we have a lot of student meetups. Our designer in residence, again, um, attends those student meetups as well, uh, gives advice, um, you know, it, it is a great feature with regards to those meetups. We've also got a fashion mascot. You can see a little visual of the puppy. <laughs> Everything's about puppies today. And um, the next, we have uh, a lot of our students are expanding their families when they're with us, you know? And so you can see the two little babies there in the, in the picture. Uh, on the right-hand side, this is a group um, uh, of uh, staff and, uh, and students that worked on a project called um, Upcycle Red Carpet. And it was all about taking um, fabrications and things that they got at uh, Goodwill. And uh, they decided that they were gonna create our own red carpet for our fashion uh, shows. We have students from all walks of life, okay? And again, we, we they, they, just connect in such a, a meaningful way. Um, we always tell our students that, you know what, you should stay connected with the people that you're school, in school with because those are the people that you're gonna network with once you're out of the, um, out of the college. Okay, and then um, this is my last slide. So I'm going to uh, let Ingrid go on after this, but I just wanna mention that this particular individual is Diana Coatsworth. Now she's a graduate um, they graduated um, a few
few years back, she had her own company, but when COVID hit, she decided to create this company uh, or this gathering called the Sewing Army. And this um, particular company was brought together with all the people that she knew, um, knew how to sew and they gathered all the resources and created um, PEE. Now in one month, they um, created over 25,000 PEEs. So we're very proud of our, our, um, our graduates and, uh, and our, our um, teachers as well with regards to what they've done to help with the COVID. And I think that's it for me. Ingrid, take yep. it away. Okay, thank you, Cynthia. Hi, everyone. My name is Ingrid. And as I mentioned at the beginning, I'm the coordinator for the fashion management programs. So um, I'm going to ironically start talking to you about design competitions, which is really what Cynthia should be talking <laughs> about. But we just didn't want to bump into each other while presenting. So here we go. Um, the first competition that we have running right now is called Make Canada, and it's a, a fabulous competition that's being sponsored by the division and Robin Kay. And if you've been in the industry, you'll know Robin Kay. She's a big deal. She started the Fashion Design Council of Canada and started the uh, fashion shows that we had in Canada at the time. So um, really an icon in the industry. And this is an interesting challenge. They're asked to create guard months, and this is... Um, garments that protect you. So it, I'm sure it was initially from a, a COVID point of view, but they're looking at any kind of physical protection. So that's currently in the works. Another competition that, that happened was the Epson uh, dye sublimation competition. And Cynthia referenced it with the FX um, facility because they have the equipment. So to the left is our designer in residence, Franco, and um, the competition poster. And then the next slide is going to show you one of the uh, graduates of the fashion, um, the International Fashion Management Program, and she was putting garments together for the Startup Fashion Week. Um, unfortunately, it didn't run, but she got some beautiful photographs out of it. So there you go. That's some samples of what can be produced with the dye sublimation. Um, we also currently have a Tiktika uh, competition in the works, and um, so we're just uh, really excited about that because it's a competition that is be, uh, international, and the students will have an opportunity to show their garments in Toronto, and the total prizes are $10,000, so quite a big deal. We've been affiliated with um, House and uh, at Launchpad, and this is a, a, a sort of a picture of the designer they worked with, which is Errolson Yu, which is a big, big deal. Um, he does a lot of sort of underground, uh, very cult-like designing. He, he puts things on the market and they're sold out in 24 hours. So the students were uh, working and you can see Cynthia, she's in the middle with the, um, the vest and the white shirt and beside her is Berta and beside her is Rosa and they're all faculty and the rest are students. So really fabulous opportunity for young creatives to launch their careers. We've been involved in Kent State hackathons every year and our students go there. Uh, it's between the technology and the fashion divisions. And every year we come home with some awards. So that's really fun. Um, two faculty have gone with them as mentors. We've also been involved every year with Ryerson with their charrettes. Um, this is with the Canadian Retail Education Association. And um, every year we have some winners in this, this um, area as well. So the Photograph with the blonde woman, she's the faculty lead. This is Vladimira and the four uh, students rather who won that year, that was two years ago. And then off to the left is uh, Michael, our winner this year. And it was virtual this year. We also recently had a case study competition between accounting and with the sustainability bent to it. And we were really excited because um, some of our students won again on that, on that competition. We always have lots of industry um, guest speakers. We have them in uh, something called In Sessions, which is every Tuesday for an hour, but also many of the faculty bring guests to their classes. So the students have lots of opportunities to meet guest speakers. Um, we've had a sustainability fashion panel now for a few years, and that happens during the In Session timeframe, where we bring sustainability experts together and they present. And the picture down to the bottom right is uh, faculty uh, pre-COVID bringing the students to um, a wholesale trade event um, that she typically did every year. 
this is a collage of just uh, some of our guest speakers, just to give you a sense of sort of the diversity of the speakers that we have in our in sessions. We also have lots of opportunities for the students to volunteer and we have job fairs and job postings. So uh, when you're, if you look at the Levi's table, um, the young lady to the right uh, is Michelle. She looks after our field placement uh, opportunities. And as a result, she's our primary liaison with the industry and works very closely with them all year round. And the woman in the blue is Stacy, and she's with the career services area and she's very involved with our division as well. So we do give the students a tremendous amount of support in terms of um, getting ready for employment. Up to the top right, you can see a group of students who are involved in supporting Trend Union, which is a trend uh, forecasting agency out of New York, and they came to Toronto to present and they needed some support, so our students were there. Um, if COVID let, gives us a break, uh, we'll all be studying abroad again, we hope. Um, in the past, we've had opportunities in Korea, Japan, and Italy. And right now, our International Center is working on international internships. They are virtual, however, um, but there's still lots of value in that. We'll reference that in just a minute. We have lots of scholarship money every year that students can apply for and be eligible for. So it's college-wide, division-wide, and then specific to our area. Um, we also have research projects and the images that you see here are some of the most recent research. One of the faculty, Milan, works on um, adaptive clothing and um, that was uh, shown in our last live fashion show. Speaking of which, at the end of every year, we have an event called Threads, and it's four, it's got four um, aspects to it. It has studio, which is when um, students want to show their work either in a portfolio, electronic format, or physical samples on a rack. We have Fashion Works, which is an opportunity for students to network with the industry. So the industry comes in, sets up booths. We have this year, it's called Awaken, and that's our fashion show and we have an award ceremony. Now, as a result of COVID this year, coming up very soon, April 27th, we'll have Fashion Works and the award ceremony. And the intention is to have the uh, fashion show happen in August. And that of course is all COVID dependent. So we wanted to talk to you a little bit about why we think studying now, even though it might be uh, virtual, is still worthwhile. So the first thing that we feel is a real big win for our students is that they're really stretching their technology and communication skills. And we feel that um, when COVID is over, this is gonna have completely altered the workplace and all of us are gonna be working um, in very new ways. So we think our students are getting an opportunity to really um, test that out and get ready for that. And what we've got here is an image of a young, a young lady who interviewed a designer last semester on Instagram Live. So we we're very proud of her. And if you want to see it, it's on our Instagram um, page, which is the um, handle is right there for you as well. So we're very excited about some of the opportunities. There were many more really exciting things that happened this term, but we just did. In the interest of time, we won't tell you everything. The next thing that we think is really great is that you can learn synchronously or asynchronously 24-7 uh, from any location. So synchronously, I can't even speak today, sorry, uh, means at the same time. So that would be like a live lecture, whereas asynchronously means you can do it at your leisure. So it's information that's available in the module and you follow along at your leisure. So I think this gives um, students a tremendous amount of flexibility. So off to the left, you can see one of our uh, students is working at her job. She's doing her homework um, between work work. And I guess her employer is cool with that. She said she got approval. So that's exciting. And the other was uh, fun. We, we had one of the live sessions and this is a design student working from his basement. So I thought really interesting to see where everybody's doing it. Um, on top of it, a lot of the sessions are recorded, so people have 24-7 access. You know, there's some flexibility with um, time, timing on when things occur. You can say you're saving money on accommodation and travel and, and clothing. Uh, you get to sleep more and spend more time with your loved ones. 
There's lots of support for the tech in terms of training you for the tech, but also in terms of running into any kind of um, technical problems. And we've also, uh, the library has also handed out tech to students who did not have tech. And I, I understand that they're doing some more re, um, investigating in that area. So uh, there may be more news down the future when it comes to that. The next thing here, this is a collage of just to show you what the studios look like for the sewing um, and the design students primarily. Um, so you can see that things have been cordoned off. Every, every precaution has been taken. And here's a, a picture of one of the students working on her sewing project. And then off to the right is her actual project. So we're very conscious of uh, keeping it very safe. The labs are restricted to 10 students and they're quite large and spread out. We also think it's one of the things we noticed is that a lot of industry events are now available and open free of charge. And um, it's been easier for us to get really interesting guests from all over the world because it's all virtual now. So this is just a collage to give you some samples of that. So Fashion Takes Action, which is the organization that's concerned with sustainability, has been having a whole series of um, guests and they have been um, recording those and we've been sharing those with the students. Um, there's a retail expert uh, and she's created a new newsletter, The Merchant Life, and we have access to that. And interestingly enough, Dior sent us uh, invites to the launch of their collections of the last two seasons. So very, very exciting opportunities for the students to be exposed um, at a much lower cost than in the past. We also uh, wanted to just highlight that our internships have been uh, very, uh, or the companies that we intern with rather have been very flexible. So many of them have adapted quickly and we think that those are the, the companies that are gonna survive in the future. Um, initially, there were lots of internships for our students in, in um, social media and in web, web, anything to do with the web or logistics. Those were the big areas that have had a real uptick. So this is just a little um, sampling of some of the companies that, that we've worked with that we feel really um, strongly for. Also, uh, many of the resources for the students have gone virtual, so they're available 24 seven. So we have peer support and tutoring, which is really ramped up quite a bit to be honest. And they, for instance, they do um, peer tutoring. So I just gave you the screenshot here of Adobe for the students, so there's lots, but there's other peer tutoring as well that goes on during the term. Um, the middle, uh, emblem or whatever, I'm not sure what to call it. Um, it shows you that we have counseling support. Some of it's self-directed, but there's also uh, you know, opportunities to talk to people live. And if the college can't help you, we will direct you to more help because we recognize that uh, this has been a really challenging time for a lot of people. So there's tremendous beefing up of support in that area. And then the picture to the right um, is our food bank when we're on campus, but I used it because we also have the food hamper delivery program and there has been a tremendous amount of food delivered to students in need. We're also really proud of the community support that we've, that we've been involved in since uh, COVID occurred. So one of the faculty who is a designer, Ross Mayer, um, launched Local Lover uh, to promote buying local and we supported him. Um, and also Brands for Canada, they donate a lot of new clothing to people in need. They dropped um, some clothing with us and um, our, our chair, believe it or not, spent her time packing this up and uh, got in touch with students and students came to pick up um, whatever they needed, whether it be coats or, or mitts or toques or, or boots or shoes, whatever. So there was a lot of support available for uh, students. The other thing is, you know, you get to hang out in your loungewear. Who doesn't like that? By now, you might be getting a little tired of it, but initially it was really fun to just be able to be relaxed. Um, we found, you know, the introverts love this online learning. So if you're an introvert, you're probably going to think you've died and gone to heaven. Um, but if you're an extrovert, you need to know this is going to pass too. When? We are uncertain about. But we know it will pass and there will be a, a return to some kind of new normal. And I'm sure it will be a hybrid. Um, so we're looking forward to the future. 
So now to just show you a few of our grads, just to give a sense of where they end up. So this is um, Mepha, and she's a, um, a design grad, and she has her own collection. And she's a very lovely woman, and she has an interesting background because her background initially was architecture. And if you know that, I think you can see it in her designs, but she's done really well. She's been a very, very active. So we're really proud of what she's been able to accomplish. And I think she only graduated last year so that's pretty amazing. We also have Betsy and Betsy does Unica Swim and um, she's another really rock star out of the design program. She opened a store in Yorkville and she does essentially custom swimwear and she gets a lot of fabulous press and the most recent one was she did a collaboration with uh, now I can't remember who. I'm sorry, I've lost my ma my mind here. But it was well, I think it was Adidas, um, and I think that's the ce the central image. So, a uh, really impressive uh, woman. And then we wanted to show you that we do have some men who graduate from the design programs as well. And here's Andrew, and he's a women's wear designer from Maquillage. So, needless to say, very proud of his success as well. To look at the fashion business industry program, which is a program that um, Cynthia mentioned is sort of a hybrid between design and management. We have Eliza and she's working basically in the tech division and she's done extremely well there. We have Christopher and he actually has his own design line. And this is one thing you're gonna notice about um, the students in this program. Um, some of them have a lot of design backgrounds, so they end up doing very design oriented things and others have more of a management background, so they end up in the management area. So these students can end up in either area, depending on their own background and interests. And then um, we have Ellen and she's uh, the owner of Tatika, which um, I, we mentioned to you earlier are doing this uh, design competition with us right now. So we're really happy with the collaboration that we've been able to keep alive with Tatika. So Tatika, by the way, would be like the Lululemon of um, Toronto. Well, actually they're, they're more than Toronto, but um, they're, that, that's the kind of clothing that they do, sorry. For the fashion management area, um, believe it or not, we have uh, Courtney and she's an LA stylist. She's a really big deal. She's done extremely well. Um, so that's quite diverse because we don't teach styling per se in the program, although we do have a styling um, program in the con ed division. But nevertheless, we seem to have a lot of students that are ending up in styling right now. Um, Heather is working with Cotton, and if you don't know Cotton, you should Google them and get to know them. Really interesting company that does sustainable, ethical. They started off with very basic t-shirts, and they have moved on into woven goods, interior uh, home goods. Um, they're doing a fabulous marketing campaign right now called Origins and talking about their background. Really interesting Canadian company that's on fire. And then for some of you that might be a little bit older, you might know about Pink Tartan. This is Kimberly um, Newport Mimram. She graduated from us a long time ago and um, she is the head designer and president of Pink Tartan. So we're kind of happy about that. In the International Fashion Management Program, we have Eric and he turned out to be a stylist as well. And that's really interesting because it has pretty much nothing to do with the program, but nevertheless, that's where he is. And he's got clients like Vans Canada, Vice Media, Converse, Nike, Madrux. So he's really working in the active sportswear area of the industry. This young lady is at, um, TJX, which is really a fabulous company to land with, and she's an associate planner, so she's doing extremely well there. And this, this woman graduated quite some time ago, and she's a merchandising planner manager in New York City for Estee Lauder. So you can also end up in a related field with the training that you got in, in your programs with us at George Brown. So we're just showing you that there are many places you can land. So now we're just going to talk to you quickly about some of the services that the college has and then we'll answer your questions because I know it's been a lot of talking. So here we go. 
Um, I'm not sure if we have international students in the audience, but we do have an international center and it's very active and very supportive of international students, obviously. So they work with them on permits and visas. They, they talk to them about how to work in Canada, you know, life at the college, living in Toronto, scholarships, anything that an international student would need to know, they're there to help support that. We have an accessible learning services area. So this is for students with special needs. So you, if you had an IEP in high school, you would go and meet um, one of these ladies in this division and they would let the faculty know confidentially uh, what kind of support you need and we'd make sure you get it. There's a tutoring and learning center. It primarily focuses on English, math and accounting, but occasionally goes into more um, program specific tutoring as well. And a lot of that has actually gone virtual. And that's where we go to the peer tutoring services. And those are previous students who have done extremely well in the course and are available to help current students who might be struggling with, um, with their courses. We have um, on-campus employment. And the primarily right now it is peer tutoring, although yesterday we just posted one for a research position, a research assistant to work with one of the faculty. Um, so the advantage of this is that it's quite flexible in terms of when you do the work and it's also uh, paid competitively. We have a student affairs area and they talk about everything to do with study and life skills and sort of helping you to uh, navigate the transition perhaps from high school to post-secondary or even from work back to post-secondary. All of these are, are, are challenges and um, they're there and th their workshops uh, change as the need changes. And something I'm really proud of is our library uh, because Bill, the, the man at the bottom right, is fabulous. He has really worked hard to get us all kinds of amazing resources. So one of the resources we have is WGSN, uh, which is a big deal, um, very expensive to access, and we have access to it for our students. We have WWD, um, we have lots of publications that um, are available for research for the students. So it's an in incredible resource, really incredible. Not to mention Bill, he's incredible. We also have counseling. So you could go and meet either with a male or a female counselor by appointment or drop-in. And um, you will uh, be able to talk about your education, your career, anything to do um, with anything that's troubling you and it's all confidential. If they can't help you, they'll send you uh, to someone who can. So they'll refer you to an outside court source. And I think the second last thing I want to talk about is career services, which I already mentioned. So they're there to help you with resumes, cover letters, all anything to do with careers. And they run um, networking events. And we also have Start GBC, which is for anyone who's interested in starting their own business. And it's a fabulous opportunity for students to get involved. Um, and Neil, the man who runs that is amazing. And this, the feedback has been really positive. So very proud of the work that Neil does in Start GBC. And that's it for us. I think we, I think we got the bell. Did we get the bell, Cindy? We did. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, gosh. And I see there are questions, but I don't know if I can see anything until I stop sharing. Should I stop sharing? Sure. I think I think Cindy might be able to monitor that maybe better than we can or. Let's I'm not, I'm not sure. Time. I oh, oh, hold on. I can see it. OK, so hold on. Will fashion business industry in September? How would team projects work due to public health restrictions? OK, so. Um, I'm not quite sure who's asking this question, but fashion business industry is running in September and team projects will um, most likely be virtual. I think the college is going to make an announcement sometime in May, June about the fall period, because, of course, they're concerned um, that they don't really know how COVID's going to go. I hope that's good. I'm going to keep going here. Um, Michelle, after completing a fashion management diploma from George Brown, what fashion related degree do we get from Ryerson? Okay, you would have, um, as far as I know with Ryerson, you have to go to them and apply and they will look at your transcript and based on your grades, they will decide what to give you or not give you. In the past, our students have gone from the fashion management program to the retail bus uh, business degree program. 
and they've uh, really enjoyed it, but it, you have to understand that it's not fashion, it's retail. So it's all forms of retail. And um, that's all I really know about it because uh, Ryerson will make the determination on what advanced standing you get. We will not be the ones to make that determination. Is fashion business industry similar to fashion design? Cynthia is asking this. Um, Yes and no. I mean, it has it has the pattern drafting and sewing in it, but it also has more management courses than the design program. So if you really like doing hands on, like all the time, go into design. If you think you might like to do a little of both, go into fashion business industry. If you hate the idea of doing a lot of sewing and, and pattern making, go into management. <laughs> That's about as basically as I can explain it. The other thing you could do is just take a look at the courses on the on the um, college website and the pathways and that might help you to figure that out. Anonymous, I'd like to know more about fashion management and the job opportunities. I'd also like to know how this program will be hold. Okay, so I think you mean held in September. Okay, we don't know about September yet. That will be determined like I just mentioned a minute ago, probably May, June sometime. Um, and uh, job opportunities after graduation, frankly, they change all the time because there's a couple of things. First of all, what we've noticed is depending on what our students' background is, both educationally and experience-wise, and depending on what they get involved with when they're with us, because you can see from our presentation today, there's a lot going on and you may not be able to get involved in all of it. So you might have to pick your spots. So depending on those factors, including in that, you know, what internship you do, um, it's going to point you in a different direction when you graduate. And then the final, the final thing that we can't control is that um, the industry's needs will change. So as I mentioned, when COVID hit, what the industry was really looking for was anybody that had any kind of experience in in website design, in inventory management, logistics, social media. Those were the big things that they were looking for. Uh, what they'll be looking for in two years, your guess is as good as mine. What we really do though, is we keep our eyes and ears very open and we make sure that we're exposing you to everything we can that will help you to be ready for whatever the job place, uh, the, the work world is looking for. So I hope that helps. I'm going to keep going because I just want to see if I can get these answered. Um, I think I answered the fashion business industry similar to fashion design. I think I did, but we'll go back there if not. Um, sustainable fashion uh, production program. Okay, it's not running for this fall and I don't know about next year. Um, I think as soon as we get back to some sort of normal, it will be running again. Um, it's just been very challenging to run all the programs given um, the restrictions that are currently on. But you need to know, I should mention actually, because we didn't maybe talk about it enough, but sustainability is embedded in all our programs by now because it's no longer sort of anything that's particularly unique. It really is such a big focus in the industry that everyone's talking about it. So I wouldn't worry about that so much. And the other thing is the sustainability was a post program, a post um, postgraduate program, meaning you needed to have an undergrad of some type before you went into it. So Victoria, I don't know if you already have that, but you can also email us and we can talk to you privately if, if you want more 